Good day, everyone. Good day, class. Um, I hope that you are doing great in your respective homes. Um, this morning, I'm here now again to discuss another topic. Lesson three of our of our course, Assessment in Learning One. So, lesson three is entitled Different Classifications of Assessment. So, at the end of this video lesson, you are expected to first illustrate scenarios in the use of different classifications of assessment. Second, rationalize the purpose of different classifications of assessment and decide on the kind of assessment to be used. So, what are the classifications of assessment or how do we classify assessment? Um, there are actually six classifications of assessment. So, first is according to purpose. So, when we classify assessment according to purpose, we have two types. We have educational type of assessment and the psychological type of assessment. Then, if we classify assessment into form, we also have two types under form. We have paper and pencil test and the performance-based test. Then, if we classify assessment as to function, we also have two types under this. We have the teacher-made test and the standardized test. Then, if we classify assessment according to the kind of learning, so there are two types under this. First, we have the achievement test and second, we have the aptitude test. Then, another classification of assessment is um, through ability. So, it has two types. First, you have the speed test and second is the power test. Then, lastly, if we classify assessment according to the interpretation of learning or how the teacher interprets the results or the scores obtained by the students, so we have two types under this classification. First, we have the norm reference test and second is the criterion reference test. So let's now discuss all the classifications and types of assessment. The first classification is purpose. So again, if we if we classify assessment as to purpose, we have two types, educational and psychological test. Now let's compare educational test versus psychological test. When we say educational assessment or test, it is used in the school setting for the purpose of tracking the growth of learners and grading their performance. So examples of this are formative assessment and summative assessment. So if a teacher gives a test or say a quiz to the students in order to measure how much they have learned about the topic, then that particular quiz or test can be considered as educational type of test or educational assessment because it tries to measure the student's understanding and the student's mastery of the subject matter. So do with formative test wherein teacher um, administers this type of test in order to make sure that, that students really are learning about the topic. So all these tests, formative and summative tests, fall under educational assessment. Because in the first place, they are used to, to track the growth of learners and to grade their performance. Besides that, it is used also in the school setting. So psychological assessment, <clears throat> it is a measure that determines the learner's cognitive and non-cognitive characteristics. So example of this is, um, natay doha klase nga, Nga categories or types of psychological assessment. We have um, a psychological assessment that measures the cognitive aspect of the child. Examples of this are the test for ability, test for aptitude, intelligence, and critical thinking. Then for effective measures, we have here test for personality, motivation, attitude, interest, and disposition. So all these tests belong to psychological assessment because they try to measure 
about the student's uh, mental processes, the student's behavior, or the including the, the motivation, how motivation is how motivated the student is to a particular say subject, how interested the student is to a particular matter, a particular issue. So this type of test measures the psychological aspect of the students. Hence, um, this is categorized as psychological assessment. By the way, <clears throat> uh, the results of uh, this psychological assessment um, is not is not is not part of the teachers the teachers uh, data the teachers basis in grading the students. Okay. So unlike educational assessment, um, psychological assessment is only used to measure students' personality and behavior, both in the cognitive aspect and in the affective aspect. Second classification is um, according to form. Still, it has two types. We have the paper and pencil and the performance-based assessment. So when we, when we speak of paper and pencil assessment obviously this these are cognitive tasks that require a single correct answer diba? so examples of paper and pencil assessments we have the binary like true or false test short answer we have the identification type of test or the fill in the blanks test then the matching type we have, we have also the multiple choice type of test these are called paper and pencil assessments because obviously in doing or in in performing this test or assessment the teacher is using paper and pencil or ball pen and, and paper but the very the very essence of paper and pencil assessment is that this type of test only generate single correct answer diba it's a binary if it is true then it is true not false a short answer identification it only it only requires one correct answer. So paper and pencil tests are somehow um, are objective type of test. They only require one correct answer from the students. Then performance-based assessments. Uh, these require learners to perform tasks such as demonstrations, um, arrive at a product, show strategies, and present information. So, in the performance-based assessments, students are required to do something, to demonstrate something in order to, to tell to the teacher or to show to the teacher that they have mastered a particular skill, a particular concept. So, from the word itself, performance-based, meaning the test is really to measure the student's skills and performance relevant to, to the skills that the teacher is teaching to the students or teaching with the students. So examples of performance-based assessments, we have writing an essay. In Moser, um, Riba writing an, an essay, it, the, the, the students here are using paper and pencil, yeah. But then, when you let your students write an essay, the students have to organize their thoughts and opinions about a particular theme or topic. So this does not require only one one correct answer or one single answer or single correct answer. Ano man, because the students have to put in their ideas, have to organize their ideas, and then uh, in order to come up with a strong arguments, a strong, a strong um, idea about a particular issue or topic being given by the teacher. Okay? Another is reporting in front of the class. Uh, obviously, when you do reporting in front of the class, you're doing something, you're demonstrating something. You are, you are, you are required to, to talk. You're required to speak, required to organize your report. So there is really demonstration and performance. Reciting a poem, demonstrating how a problem is solved. So these are few of the examples of performance-based assessments. So I hope that you can now differentiate paper and pencil assessment, uh, paper and pencil assessment from performance-based assessment. So per paper and pencil, it only requires one single correct answer or single correct answer. Then performance assessments, this requires the students to demonstrate something. So there is action. Okay. Unya arrive at a product. Okay. Product 
somehow represents to outputs. Okay? When you let your students submit outputs, so that is still considered as performance-based assessment. Now, the third classification of assessment is according to function. Um, if we classify assessment into function or as to function, we have two types, the teacher-made test and the standardized test. So teacher-made test, these are actually intended for classroom assessment. So obviously, or basically, teacher-made tests are simply tests crafted or designed by teachers in order to assess students' learning. So examples of these tests are the quizzes, the long test, and other exams. Meanwhile, standardized tests, uh, these are types of tests that have fixed directions for administering and scoring. They can be purchased with test manuals, booklets, and answer sheets. So examples of this are the Metropolitan, the Metropolitan Achievement Test, and the Licensure Examinations, um, say for teachers or for other professions. So the difference between standardized and teacher-made tests is that Standardized tests are quiet, laborious to me. Why? Because this type of test has to undergo scientific and systematic process. So the test developers or makers have to analyze the validity of the test, the reliability of the test, as well as the discrimination index of the test and other tests. Napasya i-perform ng mga tests in order to to assure that this particular test is considered standardized. So from the word itself standardized, meaning it has passed the standards. The standards in crafting a test. So standardized test also, may makaila ka nga standardized test niya if it has its own scoring scheme. And it has test manuals, booklets, and answer sheets wherein the students will have to, you know, to shade letters, shading, shading, and then the, the, the machines will be the one to check the answer sheets. Um, however, teacher-made tests also can be turned into standardized tests if and when these tests are subject to the same process with that of standardized tests. So, kung muagi siya o mga processes like katong getting the, the validity, the reliability, and the discrimination index of the test. So, kinin teacher made test, makonsidered po siya or makonvert siya into standardized test. Pero kung after making the test, the teacher automatically, I mean, right after making the test, the teacher administers this test to the students. So, teacher made the good siya because the teacher has not analyzed or has not has not assured the, the standard of the test. Okay, wa siya, nang, wa siya nang compute sa katong uh, validity or reliability sa test. Now we go to the fourth classification of assessment. We have according to kind of learning. So under this classification, we have the achievement test or assessment and the aptitude test. So, Achievement assessments measure what learners have learned after instruction or after going through a specific curricular program. They provide information on what learners can do and have acquired after training and instruction. So obviously, this achievement test or achievement assessment is really administered to students in order to get or to know how much the students have achieved after a particular series of training and instruction. So one best example of this is the National Achievement Test. So in the elementary, the NAT is administered uh, to grade 6 students. So all the test questions uh, under NAT 6 are the accumulative competencies being discussed from grades 1 to 6. So, tanang topics sa grade 1 to grade 6 na anakabutang sa NAT 6 to check uh, how much the students have achieved after studying in elementary. 
So that's the purpose of the National Achievement Test. Second, we have the aptitude assessments. These measure the characteristics that influence person's behavior that aid goal attainment in a particular situation. This measure the person's degree of readiness to learn and perform well. Sa achievement test, uh, the goal here is to, to determine how much a student achieved from a particular training and instruction or from a particular program or curricular program. Dili sa aptitude assessments, uh, the purpose of administering this test is to know how much the students or to know how ready the students to perform or to learn well. So, muna siya purpose sa aptitude test. So, example ano niya is the cognitive abilities measurement and the NCAA. NCAE. The fifth uh, classification of assessment is according to ability. So, this is of two types, speed and power. Speed test obviously consists of easy items that need to be completed within a time limit. Example is a typing test. Test, mag -type, typing test mo sa computer, keyboard, na ay sentence, ihatag, then yung chan typon, of course, with time limit. Okay, na siya time limit, so dapat magpaspas ang sudyante in doing the test. Hence, it is called speed test. Power test consists of items with increasing level of difficulty, but time is sufficient to complete the whole test. So, uh, unlike the speed test, power tests have enough time for the students to finish the test. Um, example of this is, is the test developed by the National Council of, of Teachers of Mathematics. So, sa speed test, we measure kung how fast a student can, can perform a particular skill. Power test, Gi measure siya how how intellectual a student is in answering a test that contains an increasing level of difficulty. So level one, money test. Makapasar mo, makapasar ang studente, level two, and proceed to level three. So as the level increases, um, the difficulty of the test items also increases. And that is all about the power test. So, we are now down to the last but not the least um, classification of assessment and that is according to interpretation of learning. Now, if we classify uh, assessment as to how teacher interprets the scores or the, the, the performance of the students, so we have two types, the norm reference and the criterion reference. Norm reference assessments. Interpret results using distribution of scores of a sample group. The mean and standard deviations are computed for the group. The standing of every individual in the norm reference test is based on how far they are from the mean and standard deviation of the sample. So meaning to say, if the teacher uh, compares the scores of the scores of these students to other students, then he is interpreting the scores uh, based on a norm reference manner. So, gitawag na siyang norm reference assessment. If a company teacher, the teacher compares the scores of student A to student B and to the rest of the students, then that is a norm reference assessment. So, in other words, if the teacher is ranking, ranking the scores of the students as to who's the top one, until nasa pinaka-bottom ng student, then that is norm reference assessment. So, from the word itself, norm. Norm refers to a uh, sample group of students. So, kung gi-refer ni mo ang score sa bata nga to sa group sa students, then that is norm reference assessment. Criterion reference assessments have, have a given set of standards and the scores are compared to the given criterion. So, ganina, sa norm reference assessment, ang score sa mga bata, i-compare po sa ilang mga classmates or sa ilang mga classmates within and across the, the group. Uh, criterion reference assessments, the results of the students are compared 
the predetermined criteria or to the given set of standards. So example, um, in a 50-item test, di bracket bracket ni teacher ang iyang standards. 40 to 50, very high. 30 to 39, high. 20 to 29, average. 10 to 19, low. 0 to 19, very low. So, pinang nga bracket, uh, mani siya itaw o uh, criteria. So, kung iha po ni teacher, feel na kubok na belong sa first bracket nga 0 to 19, feel na belong sa ikaduha nga bracket nga 10 to 19, ang itawag na siya o criterion reference assessments because the scores obtained by students are are compared to the given criterion. Okay? Ganina, sa norm reference, ang score sa bata i-compare sa iyong mga classmates. Kini sa criterion, the scores of the students are compared to a given criterion. That's how norm reference assessments and criterion reference assessments differ. Okay? So those are those are the six classifications of assessment. So I hope that you learn a lot, you learn something from this discussion. And if ever you have some questions or clarifications, please do not hesitate to post it in our Google Classroom. Ato lang sa ato ang Google Classroom or PM me directly sa akong messenger for for questions and clarifications. So as to your next activity. I will be uploading it in our Google Classroom. So with the link of this video lesson. So thank you everyone and I hope that you will stay safe and enjoy your stay with your family, with your loved ones. So God bless everyone. Bye-bye.